Here at the Met Office, we get sent all sorts of interesting weather questions and photographs through our Facebook page. And I'm going to try my best over the next few minutes to look at some of the photographs sent during October and explain the science behind them. Now, Peter Locke sent in this spectacular image of cirrocumulus over the north of Scotland. Cirrocumulus clouds are high, scaly sheets. They are composed of ice crystals and they are bright white. But Peter asks about the wave and rotation structure behind this particular cloud. Now, this is a cirrocumulus undulatus, and the undulatus simply means undulating or wave-like patterns. Now, the clue behind these waves is the location of the photograph, the north of Scotland, downwind of some fairly bumpy terrain. And simply what happens is the atmosphere starts to wobble. Now, the atmosphere takes several different moods. Sometimes it's in an upbeat, buoyant mood full of rising bubbles like a bubbling broth. Other times it's a bit more like a settling jelly. And if you prod it from below, it tends to wobble back into shape. And that's what's happening here. The air comes in from the west, it hits the mountains, and you get a wobble reverberating throughout the atmosphere all the way up to 25, 30,000 feet, and sometimes as far downwind as 100 miles or so. Now, these technically are called mountain waves, and these oscillations can continue for many, many miles downwind. Now, what happens with these waves is that where the air rises on the crest of the wave, the air cools, condenses, you get cloud. Where the air starts to descend on the trough of the wave, it dries out and you don't get cloud. That's why you get these waves. Another undulatus cloud is this one sent in by Lisa Jane. She asked, what kind of cloud is this? Well, this is an altostratus cloud. It's the sort of cloud that you see when the skies turn grey and overcast ahead of an approaching weather front. If you see this cloud, you know it's going to rain fairly soon. But the interesting thing here is that it's fairly bumpy, little ripples. And there could be a few different reasons for that, but it's most likely because of different air masses moving at different speeds and rubbing against each other, causing the cloud to bunch up in places. Altostratus clouds can be fairly grey and boring, but uh, altocumulus clouds like this one spotted by MT Photography can be full of interesting shapes and, at the right time of day, colours. Now, this altocumulus was taken at sunrise and the rising rays of the sun from the horizon reflect off the underside of the cloud, giving these vivid red and orange colours a great cloud to photograph at sunset or sunrise they give the best pictures but double points if you catch an altocumulus verga which is what this is now the nickname for this cloud is the jellyfish cloud and it's the tentacles coming down from the belly of the cloud that are the verga and the verga simply is rain coming down from that cloud and in this case you can see it tends to fade away because this cloud is normally about 14, 15,000 feet high in the sky and as the rain comes down, it evaporates. So anyone standing under there, they're not going to get wet. The rainfall is disappearing. From the very high to the very low, this is fog. No need for complicated Latin words. We see it quite a lot of the time in this country, particularly in the autumn. But Maxine asks, why is there fog over here but not here? Well two possible reasons. Fog, this type of fog, radiation fog it's called, happens when the ground cools overnight and that ground radiates heat, the air close to the ground cools down as well and colder air can't hold as much moisture therefore fog forms. Now it could be that in this dip it's slightly colder than over here or it could also be that there's a river down there or a stream or some marshy ground and therefore there's a bit more moisture but what i love about this is that where maxine's standing it's a beautiful sunny morning but if she was standing over here it's a foggy morning it's all about perspective just like this picture is all about perspective marianne took this picture from the top of Glasgow Science Centre Tower and she assures us it's a picture of a circular rainbow. Now the key here is she's high up and you can see full circle rainbows if you are particularly high up. 
and that's because normally we're standing on the ground, the sun is above the horizon, and rainbows form in a circle around something called the anti-solar point, which is the direct opposite location of the sun via your head. Now, normally that point is below the horizon, therefore the horizon cuts off the rainbow and you only see an arc or a bow. But if the sun is low enough, if you are high enough, the angles change so that you see much more of the circle involved in a rainbow. And if you are high enough, for example, in a plane, you can see a full circle rainbow. For example, this rainbow caught from a pilot in Slovenia, it's a full circle rainbow. You can just see how it extends all around. The sun is low, the pilot's perspective is much higher, and thankfully, he can see that full circle rainbow. Now, there are implications here, of course. It means that rainbows are technically rain rings. It also means that there's no pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. But the good news is that because rainbows are all about perspective, they are unique to us. So when you see a rainbow next time, you know that you are seeing something that only you can see. Thank you for sending in your pictures. If you have more weather questions, more meteorological photographs you'd like us to take a look at, send them in and we'll set our experts to work.